Welcome back. Now I'm still waiting on some parts for the forks and the wheels, but in the meantime, that engine is looking at me like, strip me baby. So while I wait for those bits, I'm gonna get started on the engine. This does mean the order of the videos will start to jump around slightly, but at least we're making progress. It's a 748cc inline four, and according to the clock, it's propelled this bike a mere 22,160 miles, which is relatively low, but the bike didn't come with any real history. Plus it's gotten pretty hot a few times since I've owned it. So for peace of mind, I think it's worth cracking it open to have a closer look. On the outside, it has seen better days. A lot of corrosion and peeling paint, as well as a few dozen bolts that could do with zinc plating. And that bolt holding on the oil cooler is particularly nasty. The rear side sure fared better, though it still could do with a deeper clean and fresh paint. P6? Wait a minute. I hadn't seen this before. Now my bike's a 1997 model, which makes it a P2. So now I'm thinking maybe it's not the original engine. And this does look the kind of writing that you see on parts that come from salvage companies. When I look up the MOT history online, it seems to back up the mileage on the clocks. But now I've got a pretty compelling reason to go a bit deeper. I'm going to have to check the condition of the valves, the cylinders and the pistons. The clutch cover is in great condition, if you excuse those gold Chineseian bolts, though the cover on the ignition pickup hadn't fared so well and will need fresh paint. The left hand side was okay, and it had come up quite nicely after that initial clean, but there were definitely corroded parts, especially like the bottom fitting of the oil pipe, that needs attention. I'll be able to take the generator off and give it a proper clean up, and the area around the front sprocket will get deep clean to remove the years of grime. So I'll start by taking the caps off the reed valves, so I can remove them and the foam baffle. Before I take the cover off, I figured I'd remove some of the ancillaries, starting with the top coolant pipe. This is definitely due a clean up. The lower coolant manifold was next. This wasn't in bad condition, but the actual pipe fitting wasn't great, so there'll be work needed there. Let's see what it looks like inside here. Yeah. Okay, so a bit of calcification and some rusty brown deposits. The engines definitely need a clean on the inside too. Next up, I removed the plate and the damping material from the cam chain side of the engine. Then I removed the four intake rubbers that mount the carbs. These were all in good condition with no cracks, so they should be able to get away with a simple cleanup. I removed the rubber bungs I'd used to stop water getting in on that initial clean, then got started on the pickup cover. It needed a bit of a wiggle to get past that sheared bolt, but I got there in the end. Nothing alarming in here. I released the subloom from its clamps and released the two mounting bolts that hold the pickup in place. It came out quite freely with a small tug needed just to free the grommet from the casing. The oil pressure switch was quite corroded and the connector actually broke off while I was trying to pull back the foreskin, I mean the rubber boot. The rubber boot, sorry. That broken bolt came out by hand, as did the lower radiator mounting bolts. The engine earth lead was next, held on by a 10mm bolt. Before I go any further, I want to give myself a nice clean space to lay the parts out as the engine comes apart. I cracked the six valve cover bolts in a crisscross pattern, starting at the outside and working in, and then span them all the way out. I retrieved all the rubber washers from their holes so they don't go missing. They should be able to go straight back in as they're in good shape. A few taps around the edges of the rubber mallet and it felt ready to lift off. I saw something straight away that was a little alarming. Those two black plastic pieces perched on the cam chain. Possibly one of the cam chain guides had some damage, so I picked them up, put them to our side and began peeling up the cover gasket.
Then I removed the seals with the spark plug holes. I put a socket on the end of the crankshaft and turned it to the timing mark, making a note of the position of the camshafts. This isn't really for now because I'll be taking this all apart, but it's just helpful to have a visual memory of what it's going to look like when it goes back together. Next I took out the spark plugs. I think I'll get a longer extension, this is just silly. Then I loosened the cam chain tensioner, removing the bolt and spring. The mounting bolts had some serious thread lock on them, so they were a real effort to spin out. I got there in the end, and with a bit of a wiggle, the tensioner came out. I familiarised myself with the sequence for the cap bolts, basically reversing the tightening order, so I began to crack them off a quarter turn at a time. There was only one pair of cams under load, which was similar to his intake cams, so I loosened all the others off so that it was free to lift off squarely when I backed off those last two bolts. I bring it up a few turns at a time on each. With those out of the way, I could begin to free the intake camshaft from the chain. I stuck my screwdriver through the chain to stop it falling down and released the exhaust camshaft. Then I grabbed and wiggled the front cam chain guide free. It didn't seem to have any damage that I could see. Starting to form a nice collection. Before I could remove the cylinder head, I needed to take off the oil feed pipe. Like I did with the cap bolts, I reversed the torque sequence for the head bolts, which meant starting with these two M6 bolts on the right hand side of the engine. Well, they'll definitely be getting a fresh plate. Moving to the other side, I cracked the two M8 bolts quarter of a turn before doing the same with the bolts inside the head in sequence. Now these took some real oomph to shift and the engine sliding around on the workbench didn't help. But as I haven't done this before, I want to do it by hand so I can get a feel for them. I really don't want to bust out the impact driver and shear something. I drew up a crude cardboard template of the bolt pattern and punched holes for the bolts to go. This will form a nice way to remember which bolts go where. I went through all the bolts, spinning them out to the end of their threads. Then I collected them up with a magnet, making sure to get the washer too.
For whatever reason, this bolt had a lot of corrosion, so that'll need removing, and the hole might need to clean up too. I let the cam chain drop inside the case, and I tap my way around the head with a rubber mallet. It's time to get this head off. I'm now heading into new territory for me. I did the valve clearances on the FZR, and I've replaced leaking gaskets on other bikes, but when it comes to going any deeper than that, it's my first time. I peeled off the head gasket. It had the same rusty deposits from the coolant, but it hadn't failed anywhere, which is good to see. Still, I'll be getting a new one of those. I used a magnet to lift the cam chain out so I could turn the engine without it bunching up, just to see the magic happen really, and so I could have a better look at the other two cylinders. To remove the rear chain guide, I needed to remove the pivot bolt from the outside of the casing. With that done, it comes straight out and the cylinder block is now ready to come up. It's worth saying, my heart rate is going through the roof doing this, but my confidence is building with every step. Okay, that wasn't so bad. I'll calm myself down by taking off some more ancillary parts, starting with the generator. After removing all the bolts, I worked the cover off the left hand side of the gearbox. The gasket behind was hanging on for dear life, and looking at it, I know it's going to be a real pain to get off. I removed the shift lever from the gear change mechanism, just so it didn't fall out or go missing really, and then I moved on to the oil cooler. Okay, well I think in this case, I'm going to have to bust out Mr. Ugga Dugga. Before removing the pistons, I've stuffed some clean rags into the crankcase so the circlips don't fall down. I also gave them a quick clean so I could write their numbers on to avoid mixing them up. Using a small flathead screwdriver, I prized the circlip out of the end of the piston, being super careful not to launch it into next week, or worse, drop it into the crankcase. Then, using my finger, I pushed the gudgeon pin out from the other side until it was free from the connecting rod. One thing I found with these is it's a lot easier if you're prying the end of the circle clip and not the middle. So for a few of them, I span them round in their groove to the ends lined up with the recess.
I spanned the engine 180 degrees so I could get access to pistons one and four and repeated the process for them. Again, being super careful to prevent the circlip falling into the engine. I honestly don't know what I'd do if... Okay, where did that go? Yep. Yep, that went in. That went all the way in. Good. Luckily I could see it and I was able to get it with a magnet. Whew. So, that's more than enough parts now to get started with cleaning everything up, inspecting and measuring parts to make sure they're all in spec. I checked the parts diagram and I reckon the broken plastic is from the top guide that sits inside the cover. The camshaft sprockets look good and looking down the shafts there was no scoring or damage on the journals or the cam lobes themselves. Inside the head was good too. These o-rings around the spark plug holes will need replacing as they're on their last legs. The cylinder walls, however, had been polished to a glaze, with no sign of any honing or cross-hatching whatsoever, although I couldn't see any nasty scoring, which was promising. I'm looking forward to cleaning these pistons up to check them properly, but from here I can't see any damage to the crowns or the skirts. So I'm in now, no turning back. I've picked up some measuring tools, and in the next video, I'll get started cleaning up the cylinders and pistons as well as checking it's all in spec and I'm going to have a go at giving the barrels a fresh home. I'll see you then.